hello everyone welcome to rn tutorials on engineering mechanics and in this video lecture i am going to explain about uh, how to find out the length of a belt of open belt drive system so that means here uh, how to derive the equation for the length of the belt for open belt drive system uh, i am going to explain here so first uh, uh, we take the example of open belt drive system okay so with the help of this figure by assuming certain elements we can find the length of this entire belt uh, which is uh, mounted over the two pulleys we can find uh, we can give the expression for finding the length of the belt here so for that first uh, try to assume the two centers of the pulleys are shaft as o1 o2 and similarly try to assume the radius of first pulley as r1 and the radius of the second pulley is r2 and uh, one more thing here so whenever we have uh, mounted uh, whenever we mount the belt over the pulley so this pulley will be uh, touching the uh, sorry this belt will be touching the pulley and it will be leaving at a particular point over the surface of the pulley so that is the leaving point here we try to assume uh, as uh, e here above and below we try to assume g that means the when you are mounting mounting the belt over the pulley the two points of uh, leaving the belt over the pulley is e and g and similarly in the same fashion here also uh, the contact point of the pulley so where it is coming in contact with the pulley 2 that is pulley b here we try to assume here f and h here the diagram is not properly showing but here the actual contact point of the belt initially here it takes place uh, after the center here okay here also after the center so like that uh, we can assume f and h are the contact points of the belt whenever we mount the belt over the pulley here and similarly we try to assume the extreme points of the pulley that is the first pulley as j and the second pulley as k here two extremes okay uh, this assumption is useful for uh, finding the arc length of the belt so belt is in the form of the arc here so for finding that we are giving such names like j and k for the extreme points of the belt over the pulleys here and similarly try to construct a perpendicular line from the o2 center uh, to the o1 e and assume the point as m okay so then the angle becomes here so before the angle uh, try to assume the central distance between the two pulleys as l and then the alpha assume the angle is alpha in between the perpendicular line that is o2m and the uh, line which is passing through the centers of the two pulleys that is the horizontal line assume and uh, again based upon the perpendicular lines theorem here for this uh, o1e and this line vertical line from the center the angle becomes alpha here and similar fashion here also according to the perpendicular lines theorem again here uh, the angle between this vertical line through the center and the o1f becomes the same alpha okay when you uh, uh, why i am saying this is perpendicular theorem means here whatever the alpha is an angle between the o2m and o1o2 these two will be perpendicular to the o1e and this uh, vertical line from o1 respectively so based upon that we can say the same angle will be maintained for o1e and this vertical line through the center in the similar fashion here also o2f and the vertical line through the center maintains the same angle of alpha here okay so these are the assumptions required or the elements required to, to give an expression for the length of the open belt drive system here okay next we try to uh, write a normal basic uh, expression uh, for the length of the belt so length of the belt is equal to we can write it as uh, initially we can take the length of the arc here as g j e the length of g j e plus uh, the length of e f uh, length of e f plus similarly length of the another arc which is uh, from starting point of the contact to the uh, ending point of the contact here f k h we can assume here so we can write it as f k h and plus the remaining length is h g h g we can write okay so when you keenly observe this diagram so here try carefully observe this j e j e arc length can be equal to the j g so automatically we can write it as the g j e length as 2 into j e we can write it as because this j e and j j j g both are equal length of the arcs so we can write it as either 2 into j e or 2 into j g so in place of g j e we can write it as 2 into j e 
and plus in the same way what are the EF length maintaining the belt over the pulleys the same length will be maintained for the GH also so in place of EF and HG we can write it as 2 into EF or 2 into HG we can write okay and plus in place of FKH again this is also arc over the second pulley here okay so whatever the FK arc length is maintaining that length will be equal to the KH so automatically we can write it as 2 into FK or 2 into KH so that again can be written as 2 into FK okay then uh, from this equation L is equal to we can write it as capital L which is the length of the belt by taking the 2 as common 2 of JE plus EF plus FK we can write it as okay so this is the basic expression in which we need to find out the length of JE EF and FK in terms of known elements like radius and uh, uh, in terms of radius in terms of radius we need to derive the equation here okay radius and the central distance between the two rollers okay these uh, two elements will be known elements while whenever we solve the problems related to uh, length of the bell drive here okay so first we try to write je is equal to je arc length so arc length basically length of the chord or arc we can write it as radius into the angle between the arc okay two extreme points of the arc okay so here radius as it is we can write it as r1 okay into angle so what is the angle we need to assume for the arc je okay here this is the vertical line and je j o1 is horizontal line so automatically this will be 90 okay plus the remaining angle is alpha okay to know the angle between je arc je extreme points of the arc here so the angle we can write it as pi by 2 plus alpha okay that becomes the angle maintained by the arc je and gj okay so r1 into pi by 2 plus alpha will give you the je length okay and next similarly we need to write the equation for uh, uh, fk okay so this is the je arc we have written next similarly we try to write the length of the fk here so the fk is also same radius into angle so the radius is r2 into and uh, angle is here here the angle between vertical line and this horizontal line is 90 but f is lying after the vertical line means we need to subtract the alpha so when you subtract the alpha from 90 degrees you will get the required angle in between this uh, O to F and O to K. Okay, so for finding the arc of F K. Okay, so then we can write it as pi by two minus alpha. We can write it as for F K equation. Okay, and similarly, the remaining element is E F. The length of E F is equal to we can write it as this E F. So by going through the figure, we can say that this E F is parallel to O to M. So whatever the length maintained by the O2M that is the perpendicular line to the O1E can be equal to the length of EF. So from the right angle triangle of O1O2M we can write the uh, O2M length. So that O2M length here this one is uh, uh, adjacent here. So this adjacent length can be written as here EF is equal to O2M initially we can write the O2M. So that O2M is equal to uh, from the Pythagoras rule we can write it as uh, this adjacent length O2M is equal to uh, hyper square root of hypotenuse uh, square minus this O1M square ok this O1O2 hypotenuse is here O1O2 for this right angle triangle so square root of we can write it as hyper distance between the two centers is the L here so L square minus we can write it as this o1m distance so what is this o1m distance again here when you carefully observe this o1e is the r1 and when you have drawn a perpendicular line to o1 o1e so this line is parallel to this ef line so this is r2 here o2f is r2 so similarly em is also r2 okay so then we can write it as o1m is equal to r1 minus r2 similarly we can write it as r1 minus r2 whole square we can write it as for ef or o2m is equal to from the pythagoras rule we have written o square root of o1 o2 o1 o2 whole square minus o1m whole square so o1 o2 means l o1m means here r1 minus r2 okay so these are the equations uh, we get uh, for uh, giving the proper expression okay 
so this uh, equation again we can expand so all these equations keep aside and this ef again further we can modify in the form like by uh, uh, enlarging or uh, developing this equation uh, by binomial theorem okay from binomial theorem we can write it as uh, ef is equal to l into my mi 1 minus half into r1 minus r2 by l whole square plus and so on we can write from the binomial theorem so when you clearly observe when the equation is going on increasing the values of the terms will be becoming very small so that we can neglect them so approximately this ef can be written as l into 1 minus uh, half of these two terms we can write we can consider half of r1 minus r2 by l whole square we can consider okay so now approximately ef is equal to we will get this equation now take the l inside to the brackets so we can write it as l minus l by 2 of r1 minus r2 whole square by l square we can write okay so this one l gets cancelled from the uh, l square so finally we can write the equation as uh, l minus uh, r1 minus r2 whole square by 2l we can write the equation okay this is the final modified equation for ef okay so this equation we have to use to derive an expression for the length of the belt so this equation also keep aside okay so again uh, we have to uh, write the alpha okay so the alpha should be also in terms of radius only known values known terms so for finding the alpha from the right angle triangle same o1 to m we can write sin alpha is equal to so what is the formula sin alpha is equal to opponent by hypotenuse here op opponent is o1 m and hypotenuse is o1 o2 then o1 m is equal to already we know o1 m is r1 minus r2 so r1 minus r2 divided by o1 o2 is the distance which is l okay so this is the equation so when you compare this uh, very small value so automatically this alpha can be equal to r1 minus r2 by l we can write it as okay so approximately alpha approximately equal to r1 minus r2 by l because of the smallest value of sin alpha we can consider alpha is equal to r1 minus r2 by l in radians okay so this equation also keep aside alpha is equal to okay this equation again we have to use to derive an expression so now finally come to the required formula which is 2 into je plus ef plus fk so now substitute all the terms we got uh, by analyzing this diagram geometrical diagram geometry of the figure so 2 into je means we have to write r1 into pi by 2 plus alpha and similarly plus ef means uh, r2 in sorry uh, ef means here uh, l minus r1 minus r2 square whole square by 2l and plus fk means here we have to write r2 of pi by 2 minus alpha okay so we have written all the terms in the basic equation so now try to modify e this equation so now take the elements into the brackets 2 of when you take the r1 inside you will get r1 pi by 2 plus r1 alpha and similarly plus as it is right down there is no multiplier for this term that is uh, ef here so write it as as it is and next plus uh, take the r2 inside here so r2 uh, pi by 2 uh, minus r2 alpha we can write okay so the same step i am going to produce in the next slide okay okay this is the step we got uh, by taking the terms instead of the brackets so now try to make the pi as common so take the pi as common 2 of sorry uh, before that uh, we can take the 2 also inside so when you take the 2 inside we can get the r2 r1 alpha plus 2l minus 2 into r1 minus r2 whole square by 2l plus uh, 2 into r2 pi by 2 minus 2r2 alpha okay so try to cancel the similar terms 2 2 and 2 2 here and 2 2 here also okay then uh, write the remaining terms as r1 pi so directly take the pi as common otherwise so when you take the pi as common here here pi is here here the pi okay when you take the pi as common r1 plus r2 will get close and plus again uh, try to take uh, 2 alpha as common so when you take 2 alpha here and again 2 alpha here in the second term and the last term so when you take 2 alpha common we will get r1 minus r2 and similarly we will get 2l plus the remaining term when you cancel the 2 2 minus of r1 minus r2 whole square by 
L. Okay. So in this equation, again we have to uh, substitute this alpha equation as we got R1 minus R2 by L. So in the next slide, uh, we try to uh, substitute this alpha okay as R1 minus R2 by L. So as it is write down pi into uh, R1 plus R2 plus when you substitute in place of alpha R1 minus R2, then R1 minus R2 into R minus R1 minus R2 becomes square. So 2 into R1 minus R2 whole square by L we can write it as and plus as it is write down 2L minus R1 minus R2 whole square by L. Okay, these are the same terms okay with the multiplier of 2 and here multiplier of 1 so then we can uh, subtract each other okay so we can subtract this element from this one then we can write it as pi of r1 plus r2 plus we can write it as when you subtract this element from this automatically one term remains r1 minus r2 whole square plus 2l okay this is the required expression for finding the length of the belt uh, that is uh, open belt uh, system okay so remember this equation very very important when we solve the problems okay if in examination point of view also if the question is asked to derive the equation this is the procedure we need to follow by considering the various terms and applying the geometry of the figure then we'll get the equation as l is equal to pi of r1 plus r2 plus r1 minus r2 whole square by l plus 2l so i hope you understand this simple derivation for uh, expression giving to the length of the belt over the open belt system and once again thanks for watching my video thank you all